Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Chapter 5, Lesson 2 today, Solving Systems of Equations, I should say Linear Equations, by Substitution. Please turn to page 139 of your journals. These vocabulary words are actually exactly the same as 5.1, so I'm not going to bother writing them down. Here are the steps to solving a system of linear equations by substitution. Step 1. You want to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. It does not matter which equation you choose or which variable you choose. Whichever one is easier for you is the one that you should choose. Step two is to substitute the expression from step one into the other equation and solve for the other variable. And step three is to sub substitute the value that you got from step two into one of the original equations and solve. Again, it doesn't matter which of the original equations you choose, uh, just do whatever one is easier for you. Moving on to page 140. In exercises one through 18, solve the system of linear equations by substitution and check your solution. So let's go ahead and take a look at number one. I notice that I already have a y solved for, so that means I can skip step one. That means I'm going to take this expression here and I'm going to substitute it in to this top equation for the y. So I'm going to rewrite that top equation, 2x plus 2, and instead of y, I'm going to put parentheses and then equal 10. And what I'm going to substitute in is what y equals on the other equation, which is 5 plus x. So now you'll notice that I only have x's in this equation. Now I can solve and see what x is. So I'm going to first distribute the 2 in. So that's 2x plus 10 plus 2x equals 10. And then I'm going to combine like terms and go ahead and subtract 10 here and here. So if I combine those two together, I get 4x is equal to 0. And if I divide by 4, I see that x is equal to 0. So that means that I know that part of my answer is 0 for x. So that means that 0 comma something is going to be my answer. So now I need to find out what the y is going to be. So I'm going to take my x and I'm going to substitute it into either of these two equations. Now it's easier to do the bottom equation. So that would be y is equal to 5 plus x and I had x is equal to 0. So that's going to be 5 plus 0 which is 5. So that means y is equal to 5, so I can put that into my answer box. Now to double check this, 0 comma 5, I'm going to plug it back into the original equation. So we already plugged it into this equation here. I know that that one's going to work, but I'm going to do the top equation just to make sure. So I have 2 multiplied by x, which is 0, plus 2 multiplied by y, which is 5, equals 10. So 0 plus 10 equals 10, and that does indeed work. So I know that it is correct. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 3. So on number 3, we already have x solved for. It equals y. So I'm going to take this y and substitute it in for the x on the other equation. So I'm going to rewrite that first equation. Instead of x, I'm going to write y. And then minus 3y equals negative 1. So now I can solve. So that's negative 2y equals negative 1. So y is equal to positive 1 half. So now I know that my answer is going to be 1 half is going to be what my y is. And now I'm going to plug it into either of the two equations up on the top. So I look and I see that it's easier to plug into the bottom equation. So my x is equal to y, which we got as 1 half. So that means x is also 1 half. So my answer is 1 half here. So I know it works for the second equation. I'm going to plug it into the first equation just to make sure that it works. So x is 1 half minus 3 multiplied by 1 half equals negative 1. So that's going to be 1 half minus 1 and 1 half equals negative 1. And that definitely does work. Two. I'm going to have you try number two on your own, but I'm going to give you a hint. You're going to take this x, since that's what x is, and you're going to substitute it in for the x on the first equation. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can finish number two on your own. For number two, I got one comma negative one. If you did not get that, please pause the video and see if you can find your mistake. 
I would like for you to try number four, five, and six on your own. Pause the video and then turn it back on when you're done. For number four, I got one comma two. For number five, negative two comma negative one. And number six is negative two comma one. Please pause the video if you got anything incorrect and see if you can find your mistake. Sometimes, like on number seven and eight, you're going to get them both equaling to y. So that's not a problem. We still need to take one of our y's and plug it into the other y on the other equation. And so that's going to be negative 2x is equal to 2x plus 8. And then we need to solve from there. So I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. And I get negative 4x is equal to 8. Divide by negative 4, so x is equal to negative 2. So now I'm going to plug it in. And it doesn't matter, remember, which one I plug it into. I'm going to go ahead and do the second one. So y is equal to negative 2 multiplied by negative 2, which is positive 4. So my answer is x is negative 2 and y is positive 4. Remember to always write your answer in a point form, x, y. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into the first equation there just to make sure it's correct. So we have 4 is equal to 2 times negative 2 plus 8. And that does indeed work. Number 9. So I have y is equal to 4. So this time I just need to plug in a 4. And so we get 2x minus 3 multiplied by 4 is equal to 0. So that's 2x minus 12 is equal to 0. So 2x is equal to positive 12. x is 12 divided by 2, which is 6. Now let's plug it in. Now we know that y is equal to 4. So there's actually nothing to plug in because I'm told that y is equal to 4 up here. So my answer is just 6 comma 4. I'm going to double check that by plugging it into the top equation. So 2 times 6 minus 3 times 4 equals 0. So we have 12 minus 12 equals 0, which is correct. I would like for you to go ahead and do number 8 on your own. For number 8, I got 4 comma 4. You'll notice that I did a little trick here to get rid of my fractions. I multiplied by the denominator, but don't forget, if you do it that way, you have to multiply in to the second one as well. So that would be x plus 12. And then if we do it over on the other side, when we plug it in or multiply it in, we get 3x. But don't forget, you also need to multiply it by the other number as well. So I got plus 4 there. So that's a little trick if you want to get rid of fractions. We are not going to do all of these problems on this page, but we'll do a few of them. So let's take a look at number 10. Once in a while, we get a problem where the variable is not solved for one of the variables. So you have to choose which equation you want to solve for. In this case, I think it would be easier to either solve for x or y on the top one. I'm going to go ahead and solve for x. So if I do that, I need to subtract y on both sides. So that means x is equal to 3 minus y. Now I have what x equals, and I can substitute that in to the other equation. So we have 2 multiplied by x plus 4y is equal to 8. And we found out that x on the other equation was 3 minus y. So now I need to solve for y. I'm going to distribute, combine like terms, and at the same time subtract 6 from both sides. So I have 2y is equal to 2. So that means y is equal to 1. So now I'm going to plug it into one of my equations. I think that the this equation here is good. So that would be x equals 3 minus y, which is 1. So x is equal to 2. So my answer is 2 comma 1. If this was a test or a quiz, I would make sure to plug that back in and make sure that I got it correct. Let's take a look at number 13. On number 13, I need to choose what I want to solve for. I notice that this is close to being by itself. It does have a negative out front that I need to deal with, but I'm going to go ahead and solve for y on that one. So I'm going to subtract 5x on both sides. So we have negative y is equal to 2 minus 5x. And then I need to divide out that negative 1. So positive y is equal to negative 2 plus 5x. Now I have y by itself, and I'm going to take that y and substitute it in on the other equation before the y. So we have 7x minus 4 times y is equal to 8. And for our y, we got negative 2 plus 5x. And now I'm going to go ahead and solve. And when I solved, I got x is equal to 0. So now I'm going to plug in x is equal to 0 into the second equation. So we have 5 
x minus y is equal to 2. So x is 0. So 5 times 0 is 0. So it's negative y is equal to 2. So y is equal to negative 2. So my answer is x is 0, y is negative 2. OK, I would like for you to try number 12 only in this first part. We're going to be skipping the other problems in this section. OK, on number 12, I got 1 comma 0 as my answer. If you did not get that, please pause the video and see if you can find your mistake. OK, I'm skipping to number 19. An adult ticket to a museum costs $3 more than a children's ticket. When 200 adult tickets and 100 children's tickets are sold, the total revenue is $2,100. What is the cost of a children's ticket? So I need to write my equations. I'm going to start by looking at this first sentence. So we have an adult ticket. I'm going to call that A to a children to a museum costs three more dollars than a children's ticket. So I'm going to call that C. So that means that A is going to be three more than the child's ticket C. OK, so now let's take a look at the next one. When 200 adult tickets, so that's 200 adult tickets, and 100 children's tickets, so plus 100 children's tickets, are sold, the total revenue is $2,100. And so that is what my second equation is. So now I notice that I have A already solved for. So I'm going to take that and substitute it in for this A down here. So we have 200 multiplied by A plus 100C equals 2100. And A that we're plugging in is 3 plus C. So now I need to solve for C. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do that on your own. OK, when I solved for C, I got C is equal to 5. So let's go back up. If we look at the question, it says, what is the cost of a children's ticket? So I don't need to find out what the cost of the adult ticket is. I already have my answer here. So we would say a child's ticket cost $5. OK, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.